Where pollinators and their habitat needs are concerned, one of the considerations that we have is what are the potential negative impacts when pollinator habitat is closely associated with agriculture. One of the views out there is that the potential negative impacts from agriculture simply outweigh the value that we get from pollinator habitat when it's located within 120 feet of agriculture. Let's chat about that a little bit more. The two most iconically recognized insect species in this country, monarch butterflies and honeybees, along with all kinds of other native pollinator species, have their habitat needs absolutely intertwined with the most important agricultural regions in our country. That means that if we want to find success in pollinator population recovery, we have to find ways in which great pollinator habitat can intertwine and work with agriculture. Clearly, finding ways for pollinator habitat projects to work with agriculture is really important. Let's emphasize that point with another example. A few years ago, monarch butterfly scientists gathered together to consider the decreasing numbers in the eastern population and what some of the solutions might be to increase the population and stave off an Endangered Species Act listing. One of the outcomes produced was a map that highlighted monarch butterfly conservation priority areas. These are the areas where pollinator habitat efforts would have the greatest impact on increasing the eastern monarch butterfly populations. Areas that were designated in red, orange, and yellow were the most critically important areas. On this map, the state of Iowa was clearly in the bullseye of that conservation priority map. At a similar time, Iowa State University started looking at ways that agriculture could have a potential impact on pollinator habitat. In their studies, they took a close look at Story County, Iowa, and determined that if a 120-foot no-habitat buffer was applied in the county, it would effectively remove 84% of the roadsides and 38% of the conservation reserve program land, pastures, railroad right-of-ways, riparian corridors, and wetlands. If a 120-foot no-habitat buffer were applied in this critical area for monarch butterfly population recovery, we'd be attempting to achieve habitat success with one hand tied behind our back. I think that's sort of like me trying to race Usain Bolt in the 100-yard dash. Not much of a chance for success there. In future studies, Iowa State University intends to test the hypothesis that the conservation program benefits of establishing great pollinator habitat in close proximity to agriculture will outweigh the risks of increased pesticide exposure. That study and its results will certainly help inform our work with pollinator habitat that's associated with agriculture. Based on my three plus decades of experience in designing, establishing, and managing habitat projects, and then monitoring the wildlife and pollinator responses, I've come to the conclusion that it's far more important to place our focus on making every acre of habitat the best it can be. If a pollinator habitat project doesn't contain a rich diversity of wildflower species, or isn't maintained regularly with important management activities, or it wasn't established using the proper site preparation techniques, its pollinator benefits are gonna be reduced no matter where the project is located. Because it's so critically important, I'll take an acre of pollinator habitat wherever I can get it. And then when we get an acre of habitat, we need to focus our time and effort on making it the best possible acre of habitat it can be. That's the best way to increase our pollinator habitat benefits and outcomes. Considering how agriculture could have an impact on your pollinator project is certainly important, but focusing your energy on the design, preparation, planting, and future management of your project to get the best possible results, no matter where it's located. Now that's great habitat. <laughs>